What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue talking about force components and I wanna go over a pretty common scenario that comes up. So let's say that a 20 kilogram object is sliding down a ramp that is inclined at 30 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a diagram of this object and then talk about the different forces that are acting on it. So we have this ramp here and it's inclined at 30 degrees, so that means this angle is 30 degrees. And then we have a 20 kilogram object that is sliding down the ramp. So let's say this 20 kilogram object is up here and it is sliding down the ramp. So what are the different forces that are acting on this object? Well, if this object is sliding down the ramp and there's nothing that is holding it back from sliding, there's no friction or no one is pushing it up the ramp, then the only force that is acting on it is the force of gravity. And the force of gravity, as you know, is always just straight vertically down. Right? So this is the force of gravity that is acting on this object. And if you remember, force of gravity is always equal to what? It's always equal to the mass of the object times that constant of 9.8. So a mass of 20 kilograms times 9.8 gives us 196 newtons. So this force of gravity here is 196 newtons that is acting on this object. But notice that this object is on a ramp and we have this force of gravity pointing straight down. So it's kind of weird to have this force sort of pointing straight down while this object is sliding down at an angle. So what is usually done is you break down this force of gravity into components. And the components are usually a force that is perpendicular to the ramp and then a force that is parallel to the ramp, right? So this force here Again, it's perpendicular to the ramp. And then we have a force here that is parallel to the ramp. So if we take this force that's parallel to the ramp and shift it up, it would just be over here. So this uh, object that's sliding down the ramp, notice now that we have a parallel force. What's the force of the object coming down? So what we can do at this point, we could just label these forces. So let's call this force Y here and then this force that's parallel to the ramp, let's call it force X. And we already have the force of gravity that is 196 newtons. Now the question is, what's the force of Y and X going to be? Can we find those forces? And the answer is yes, we can, because we have the angle at which this uh, ramp is inclined at. So to do it, it's a little bit complex, so notice that this is 30 degrees and this is a right angle triangle. So if we look at this big triangle here, it means that this angle here is going to be 60 degrees. Then next thing to notice is that this line that I drew here, it's straight down and then this force of gravity is straight down as well. And then notice that since this line is going through that force of gravity and through that straight line down, we can use the Z pattern to show that this angle and this angle is 60 degrees. And this here is a right angle triangle, right? So if I draw this one more time, this here is the force of gravity. This line I drew over here. And then the ramp, it's the line that's going through. So this angle here is 60 degrees. Notice that these two lines are parallel. So with the Z pattern, that means this is 60 degrees as well, which represents this small angle and this triangle. And notice that this small triangle here, it's a 90 degree triangle because we said this force Y is the perpendicular force to the ramp. So if this is 90 degrees, this is 60 degrees, that means that this angle up here is 30 degrees. And what's gonna happen is every time you have a question with an incline ramp, 
and you make this triangle here. So you got the force of gravity going straight down, then you got the perpendicular force, then the parallel force. This angle here at the top, 30 degrees, it's always going to equal the angle at which the ramp is inclined at. So I wanted to show you how you get that angle, but you don't have to go through all these steps to get it. You can just know that this angle here, this top angle, is always going to equal this angle here that's given. All right, so we can erase this 60 here. And we got this right angle triangle here. Notice that since this is 90 degrees, this is going to be 90 degrees as well because this is perpendicular and this is parallel to the ramp. So this is 90 degrees, this is 30 degrees, and we already know what the hypotenuse is. It's 196 newtons. So notice now that we can easily solve for that parallel force and that perpendicular force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this big triangle and I'm going to draw it on the side just to simplify things. There's a lot going on here with the arrows with the multiple triangles. So I'm going to take this right angle triangle and I'm going to sort of shift it up so you see it better. So we draw that same right angle triangle like this. Notice that this here, that's the 90 degree angle. This vector x, this is vector y, and then this hypotenuse is the force of gravity, or 196 newtons. All right, so I took this triangle and then sort of uh, shifted it, drew it up here, and then this top angle is 30 degrees. And now notice, super simple for us to solve this uh, vector x, vector y, we can just use SOHCAHTOA. So notice that this vector y, basically cos of 30, is going to be that vector y, that force y, let's even call it the magnitude of vector y, over 196 newtons. This cos 30 is over 1, so we can just cross multiply. So we got the magnitude of vector y is cos 30 times 196 Newtons. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting 169.74 newtons. So that represents this force. That is the perpendicular force. So 169.74 newtons. And then we can solve for this force x here. Instead of using cos, we're going to use what? Sine. Right? Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got sine of 30 is equal to the magnitude of x over 196 and then we just uh, cross multiply so the magnitude of x would be sine of 30 times 196 newtons sine of 30 is just one half one half times 196 that would give us 98 Newtons. So going back to the diagram, that means that this force x here, that parallel force to the ramp, is 98 newtons. And this force here is usually discussed more in these types of questions than this perpendicular force. So if we take this force, shift it up, notice that that force is parallel to the ramp, and that is 98 newtons. So sometimes you'll actually get questions asking you what force must you be pushing the object up the ramp at to keep the object still, to keep the object from sliding down the ramp. Well, if you think about it, the force that would keep the object from sliding down the ramp is the exact opposite force that goes up the ramp from this one here, right? Because this 98 Newtons is a component of that force of gravity. So to counteract that, we need an equilibrium force that has the same magnitude that's going in the opposite direction. So if you ever get a question asking you what force would keep the object from sliding down the ramp, you would say a force, in this case, of 98 newtons that is pushing up the ramp. Or the force that's pushing up the ramp at a magnitude of whatever that parallel force is that is going down the ramp. Right? So that's how you take an object that has a force of gravity acting on it and break it down into a perpendicular force to the ramp and a parallel 
force to the ramp. And whenever you make this triangle here, always remember that that small angle up there is always equal to that uh, incline angle. So we proved how that is with the Z pattern and all, but you're not gonna have to prove that with every question. When you run into these questions, you could just start realizing or just remembering that that small angle is always equal to that incline angle.